Hi and welcome to Shorts in Biology. The purpose of this video is to clarify a common source of confusion, which is the difference between a DNA molecule and a DNA strand, as I find that often students mix these terms up when describing the structure or replication of DNA. A quick disclaimer before we start is that for the purpose of understanding the difference between a DNA molecule and strand, I'm keeping things very simple. In reality, DNA structure and replication are both much more complex. Let's start with the basics. A molecule is a group of two or more atoms held together by chemical bonds. So this is part of a DNA molecule. It is composed of a sugar phosphate backbone and has branching nitrogenous bases that form hydrogen bonds with their opposite complementary base. More on complementary base pairing in a minute. The shape of the DNA molecule is that of a double helix. Hence, DNA is often simplistically represented like this. As we can see in this diagram, a DNA molecule is composed of two strands. This is a strand of DNA, and this is a strand of DNA. These strands are complementary to each other, which means that the opposing nitrogenous bases are always complementary. If one strand has an adenine base, the other strand will have a thymine base in the same position. And if one strand has a cytosine base, the other strand will have a guanine base in the same position. Together, these two strands make up the DNA molecule. DNA is replicated prior to cell division so that both of the daughter cells will have a complete and identical copy of the DNA. Therefore, the DNA molecule, which is double-stranded, needs to be replicated to ensure that the new DNA molecules will be identical to the original parent molecule. This original molecule acts as a template. This involves breaking the hydrogen bonds to separate the DNA strands and expose the complementary bases. Using complementary base pairing rules, two new strands of DNA are synthesized, which are both complementary in sequence to their template strand. The outcome of this process is two DNA molecules which are double-stranded. They are composed of one original strand and one newly synthesized strand. These two DNA molecules are thus identical. To understand this a bit better, Let's look at this in terms of the sequence of nitrogenous bases. Here is the original DNA molecule represented by its sequence of bases in a section of each strand. In reality, of course, there would be many more bases. Although not shown in the diagram, there are hydrogen bonds between the complementary bases. These hydrogen bonds are broken by the enzyme DNA helicase, which causes the DNA strands to separate. This exposes the bases so that the strands of DNA can act as templates. Using complementary base pairing, the new strands of DNA are then synthesized. Now we have two DNA molecules that are both composed of an original and newly synthesized strand. Both of these DNA molecules are identical to each other and the original molecule. In summary, DNA is a molecule that is composed of two strands. It is double stranded. When DNA is replicated, the two strands of the original DNA molecule act as templates to synthesize the new strands of DNA. This ensures that the new DNA molecules are identical both to each other and the original molecule. The outcome of DNA replication is two DNA molecules that are both double-stranded, where one strand comes from the original parent DNA molecule and the other strand is newly synthesized. Hence, DNA replication is said to be a semi-conservative process. Instead of the two daughter DNA molecules being completely newly synthesized, the original DNA has been conserved and is one strand of each daughter DNA molecule. Now when the cell divides, both daughter cells will contain a complete and identical set of the DNA. Thanks for listening. Hopefully the difference between a DNA strand and molecule is clearer and it will be easier for you to use the correct term when describing DNA replication.